Well, my friends, if you've been keeping an eye on the development of Android over the past few years, then you would know the upcoming desktop mode is probably one of the biggest new additions we've seen to Android in quite some time. It's actually a huge deal because this seems like a genuine sneak peek into the future of the ecosystem where we get to test out what is effectively the early stages of a true Android tablet slash laptop slash PC hybrid all running off one singular Pixel device. No doubt, this is something we've been keeping an eye on since its initial debut almost six months ago, where initially, I have to say, it was in a really rough state. But with the latest December QPR update on the Pixel 10, there's been a big level of polish that is sorely needed in order to make it somewhat viable by today's standards. And after using it for almost a week as my main computing device, I have some takeaways to share with you on how development has been going. And honestly, it's starting to come together in a way that is genuinely exciting if you're a fan of the platform. First up, if you're new to desktop mode and want to get started, it is incredibly simple. All you need is a USB-C to HDMI adapter, a wireless mouse, and a wireless keyboard. Or if you want to do everything wired like I am for the majority of this video, you can get an adapter like this 5-in-1 dongle from Anchor where you can manually plug in all your peripherals, plus there's an Ethernet port if you need that additional speed. Although, if this is something you think you might be doing a lot of in the future, a USB-C dock, an official one where you mount your phone to it, would probably be a lot cleaner. Regardless, that's all you need in terms of equipment, and then on the Pixel side of things, you'll have to enable developer options, then toggle the enable desktop experience features option, followed by a reboot. If everything is done correctly, you should be able to plug in your Pixel 8, 9, or 10 into an external monitor where you get a prompt immediately asking how you want to proceed. With this prompt, you have two options here, a mirroring mode or a desktop mode alongside a toggle to have it remember which mode you prefer by default, which is pretty helpful. Mirroring mode is exactly what it sounds like. It just reflects your phone screen one to one. Good for those that maybe want to stream movies or share photos or maybe want to demo something on your phone. Mirror mode is perfect for that situation. But the real reason I think someone would use this is for desktop mode. This is probably the most exciting addition of this feature as it launches a specific dedicated desktop in interface, complete with a taskbar and the ability to pin your most powerful apps and proper windowing features, just like you would see on Chrome OS, MacBooks, or window machines for that matter. And interestingly enough, the phone operates completely separately from this desktop mode. So on the display, you can be fully immersed in the desktop interface, getting work done or multitasking between different groups of apps while still answering texts and using apps on your phone independently, which makes this feel more like a dual monitor setup rather than just one isolated display, which just adds a bit of utility right off the bat. When it comes to the actual operating system itself, you can really see how much work Google has put into refining this desktop experience since its initial launch about six months back. For one, you have the ability to resize apps to pretty much any orientation you want. Anything from Reddit to YouTube, Slack, Facebook, Instagram, eBay, pretty much any app you can think of is able to be resized. And whatever size slash aspect ratio you get it will determine if it shows you the phone version of that app or the tablet version of that app. So for YouTube Music, for example, you can see it switch in real time from that singular mobile view to that two pane large screen view. The settings app also does it as well and really any app that supports it. Also, since we're talking about window behavior, it is worth mentioning that I was able to have five of these app windows open at the same time, just something to know. Either way, alongside the freeform windowing option, you also get the ability to snap a window to the left or right hand side for quick split screen multitasking and a maximize option, which fills the entire screen with the window that you're working on. Although weirdly enough, there are more app windowing options. If you click the drop down menu in the top left hand side of an app, you will see four additional toggles where you can enter a true full screen view that actually locks you into one particular app for a full immersive experience, a window toggle to return back to that freeform windowing mode, an option to open that specific app inside a Chrome tab. Very useful if there's a compatibility issue, which will happen while Google still refines this desktop mode and the ability to have links open inside the app 
or within the Chrome browser. Again, just nice flexibility options while we wait for the system to mature a bit. I also forgot that we got some features fully working over the past few months, like a real functional desktop view. So you can have one group of apps on one desktop while being able to swap over to a new set of apps on a second or third desktop. And we also have quick settings toggles working now alongside notification access. Both features that were sorely missing since its initial release, although they definitely do need to work on it a little bit from a UI perspective, as everything is just stretched out like you would see on the phone. Nothing is really custom tailored for this desktop experience, at least quite yet. Lastly, there is a brand new feature that really surprised me. Starting with that December QPR update we got a while back, Circle to Search actually works in this desktop mode. To access, you just hold down the app drawer search icon and it triggers exactly how you would expect it to. With the full screen animation, the circling gesture, AI overviews, quick access to Nano Banana, pixel screenshots, the text editor, or identifying music. I don't know why, but I find it so crazy to see such a headlining Android feature integrated so deeply into this experimental desktop mode. To me, it shows Google is very interested in getting this working to the fullest. And yes, while it's still very far from something like Samsung DeX, for a Pixel phone to get something this advanced in its stock software, it's a very solid foundation. But I think the big question that everyone is thinking is, yeah, this is great great and all, but what can you actually do with this? Which is a fair question, and I think the answer around this feature existing is a lot deeper than that. But at the surface level, there is a lot you can do here. Over the past week, I've used this desktop mode almost as my main machine, where I actually wrote and researched this entire script using the desktop windowing mode on the Pixel 10, and the experience was actually pretty great. I have to be clear that in its current state, it still needs a lot of work. Right now, the mouse and keyboard controls just don't feel as fluid as they would from a device that was built from the ground up with them in mind. The display resolution, while improved at launch, is still noticeably worse compared to a device that is natively ready for this kind of setup. The OS itself is a bit buggy with glitch UI elements showing up sporadically. Once in a while, I have to unplug the Pixel 10 and do a hard reset because something got stuck along the way. But once it's actually cleaned up to be a fully functioning, no-nonsense stable environment, it's going to open up a lot of possibilities that were just not doable on Pixel pixels in the past. For example, if you're someone like me who frequents a co-working space or has access to a computer lab, this setup is perfect as you can just walk in with your phone and a small dongle, plug it into a monitor, keyboard, and mouse that's already there and instantly have a fully fledged desktop PC without having to log in or set anything up. All of your apps, files, AI agents, web portals, and more are already set up and ready to go. Which makes all the customization you do in your free time that much more valuable because it does eventually transfer over to a desktop interface. Gaming is actually pretty fun here too. I tried some Minecraft since it has full mouse and keyboard support and it ran very smoothly, but you can also hook up a controller and play some of Android's best titles like Stardew Valley or Dead Cells on the big screen. Same with Game Boy emulators or GameCube emulators. This is the perfect environment for that. Or if you're into cloud gaming, you could fire up Google Stadia or... <laughs> Sorry, my bad, my bad. GeForce Now and turn your Pixel into a legitimate gaming console. And yes, while we know Tensor chips aren't always winning in terms of raw performance, the Pixel 10 did handle all of this light gaming and a handful of windows that I had open perfectly fine. Still, it has to be said, this is why people like me do want Tensor to have way better performance so that it can handle all of these new game-changing features like this in the future. So hopefully this is something Google's taking account for in future Pixel releases. But if I'm being 100% honest here, I don't even think this desktop windowing mode is really made for Pixel phones in the first place. Don't get me wrong, it's a massive flex that something like this is even possible on a smartphone, and it certainly does set the Pixel apart from anything else in the market. However, to me, all of this screams that Google is using the Pixel lineup as a public testing environment for what we will eventually see with the heavily rumored Chrome OS and Android merger. Most recently, Recently, we found out the code name for this massive project is labeled Aluminum OS or Aluminium OS for the non-Americans out there, which is expected to see a full release sometime in 2026. To add to this, we actually saw a job posting from Google that specifically mentions a role responsible for, quote, developing and maintaining a product slash portfolio roadmap that addresses deliverables and strategy that transit Google from Chrome OS to Aluminum with business continuity in the future. And that, my friends, is this 
as clear of a confirmation as we are going to get at this time. So when you pair that with the reports of a high-end Pixel laptop being on the horizon, plus the idea that Google hasn't completely given up on their tablet ambitions with a potential Pixel Tablet 3 or future foldables, the pieces start to fit together, at least in my eyes. Even looking at the new Galaxy XR, I see a lot of this same desktop mode DNA baked into its software as well. Basically, this whole desktop windowing tech is just way too valuable for Google's future endeavors just to stay locked onto a phone screen. So even if this feature remains niche and isn't being used by a ton of Pixel owners, the entire future of the ecosystem is likely riding on it because other Android form factors will absolutely use it to the fullest. To me, they're effectively setting the stage for a massive hardware push in 2026 and 2027 with this tech in mind. And I'm hopeful that with this apt adaptability push Push, all the work finally comes together to the point where developers feel their time is genuinely well spent making pro level apps for Android, knowing that they're going to scale perfectly from a phone to a tablet to the eventual Android laptop to Android XR headsets, plus many, many more. With that in mind, it's safe to say we still have a long way to go. Like I said, there are a lot of issues with scaling, horizontal scrolling on apps like Reddit or the Google Play Store is still pretty rough, and I'd love to see them unlock higher frame rates like 120 hertz to make the experience feel smoother. We also need real desktop class apps, especially with a desktop version of Chrome with actual extensions. Ugh, that would just be super helpful as well. But for now, this is what we've got and I'm patiently waiting to see where things go from here. I expect the next big update that we can see from this is maybe in the Android 17 betas. At least that's where I would be looking for the next big piece of information regarding this. But in the meantime, I'm gonna leave it to you guys now. What do you think of this desktop windowing mode on Pixel devices? Is this a feature you would actually use to replace or supplement a computing device in your day to day? Do you you think this is a gimmick that won't get much attention at all? Or are you like me, someone who's willing to be patient, let Google do their thing, and we'll see how things look once we have an actual release date? Please let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below as I'm really curious to hear what the Android community is thinking. And honestly, because of the Android community, that is why these videos are so fun to make. I love to hear your insight. I love to hear what you guys are thinking. So please leave a comment and let us know. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.